Gentlemen, I would like to propose a toast to our guest of honor. Judge O'Hare, bon voyage and safe return. Bon voyage. We all know that I shall be away a considerable time, too long for this district to be without a judge or a circuit court. In this emergency, the members of the town council have appointed a man to act in my place, and we all agree that they have selected the best possible one. Ben Cartwright. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Ben. Gentlemen, I, I, I can't possibly accept this. Why, this is the wrong time of the year, for one thing. We're too busy here at the ranch. And, oh, come and, on. No, of Are course not. No, no, wait a minute. No, please. No, not, besides, I'm not qualified. We're not going to accept no for an answer. That's right, Ben, and we're going to stay here all night if we have to. You know, uh, you're the only one we can trust. Gentlemen, I propose a toast to our new judge, Ben Cartwright. Here, here. To Judge Paul. <laughs> and faithfully swear to uphold the laws of the United States of America and the territory of Nevada. So help me God. Congratulations, Ben. Congratulations, Paul. Thank you. Congratulations, Thank you. Judge. Congratulations, Thank you. Judge. Thank you. <laughs> Gentlemen, if you don't mind, I'd like to have a word alone with our new magistrate. Why, certainly. Go ahead. Excuse me. Ben? Sure. Well, how about Phillips? that? Then? Help yourself. There's plenty more over there. Well, all right. Thanks. Yes, Dick. Do you realize what you've done to me? Ben, the reason I asked you to come in here, and I didn't want to say this in front of the others, is there's no one else in Virginia City equipped to handle the job. But the responsibility, there's, there's got to be... no man better liked or more respected. Well, I sure don't know anything about the law. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not equipped to, to sit in judgment on my fellow man. Well, it takes more than a wide knowledge of the law to be a judge, Ben. Takes being a man people can look up to, whose decisions will be respected. You're the only one strong enough to keep his head. Good luck. You gonna go on in, Judge? Hmm? What? Aren't you gonna go in there, Judge? Oh. Well, of course. What's the matter with you two? Well, there for a minute, it looked like you'd rather hold court out here. Uh, Your Honor. Yeah, well, you just watch yourself now. Contempt charges in my court are very expensive. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Judge. Oh, and, uh, you can pay off your fine by putting up my buggy. I was gonna plead innocent. Anything I can get for you, sir? Oh. Your chambers are here, sir. If there's anything you need, I'll be in my office over there. I'm Higgins, your bailiff. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, Jed, what's all the commotion about? Somebody robbed the bank, Ben. Ben, sure is a mess, huh? What'd they get away with? They ain't sure. Gonna be plenty, though. Frank's going over the books now. Disaster. Complete disaster. $256,000 in cash. We'll have to close the bank. What? Shut the doors and go out of business. The whole town will be bankrupt. Best safe cracker in the territory. Sundown Davis. He didn't do this. Why? Because you arranged his parole? Well, we better ride out and check on him, but I'll bet you you're wrong. You go inside. No, I. I want to stay with you. And I want you out of the way. You mind me, you hear? Go on! Good morning, Billy. Good morning, Sheriff. Uh, is the car right? Billy? Uh, what brings you out this way? Is your father around? Uh, no, he isn't. Uh, something I can do? Was he, uh, was he here last night? Yeah, I guess so. You mean you ain't sure? Oh, well, he's, uh, picks himself a place out in the barn, a uh, house kind of small for three people, you know. But, uh, I, I, I guess he was there all last night. He usually stays pretty close. Well, do you have any idea where he might have gone off to this morning? Oh, well, he's been thinking about going deer hunting. Uh, we're out of meat and uh, <laughs> out of just about everything as far as that goes. How'd you hurt your head, Billy? Oh, I was chopping some firewood and a chunk flew up and hit me. Mind if we look around? No, I guess not. Uh, but uh, can't you tell me what this is all about? Uh... Well, the uh, Virginia City Bank was robbed last night. <laughs> you think... Uh... Dad did it. Well, we don't know. Just want to talk to Sundown about it. You helped him get his parole, Mr. Cartwright. You know he wouldn't do anything like that. I hope not, Billy. You uh, show us around this place? Now you can find your own way around. Say, Billy. Uh, they're just looking around. How'd they know to come here? Dad's reputation, that's all. You go inside and stay there. I don't want them talking to you. If they ask, I'll just say you're too sick. Go on. Oh, I'm tired. 
We had some uh, trouble in town today. What? When they robbed the bank. Really? Yeah, cleaned it out. You got everything? Everything. Oh. Town's in trouble. Hey, you got any idea who did it? Yeah, well, uh, I'll talk about it later. Yeah. Paul, you, uh, you got a guest in there in the study. He wants to talk to you private. Who? Sundown Davis. <laughs> Sundown, I just come from your place. I was looking for you. Yeah, well, you were looking for the right man, Ben. I came to turn myself in. There's my gun. I'm the one that robbed the bank. Yeah, I let you down, Ben. After you standing up for me for my parole and all, I let you down. I can't figure you out at all, Sundown. I just can't figure you out. All right. Where's the money? Well, now, that's the joker in the deck, Ben. What is? I hid it. <laughs> yeah, I hid it real good. Nobody knows where it is with me. Well, then, if uh, if you know where it is, let's uh, let's help out the people of Virginia City and let's go find it. Well, now, just a minute, Ben. It ain't that easy. That ain't the way it's going to work at all. How come? Well, I made a mistake. Let's put it that way. I made a mistake, but I ain't going to serve no more time behind those prison walls on account of that mistake. How do you figure you're going to avoid that? Well, now, that's where you come in, Ben. I'm going to make you a deal. I'll turn all the money over to you. You see to it that that judge sets me free. <laughs> come on, let's play a game of chess, huh? You want the light or the dark one? this is going to do to me? Well, it means 30 years of good hard work gone. Clear gone. All right, Sundown. Come on, right up there. You boys wait out here. So I believe we split the posse into three parts. We'll be able to cover... Sundown. We was just fixing to organize a posse to go hunting for you. Well, I'll uh, save you the trouble, Sheriff. Yes, yeah, Sundown has given himself up for that bank robbery. Paul? Roy? There's a group of folks congregating down from the bank. It looks like they're heading this way. Bob, you and Charlie go head them off, will you? Yeah. Uh, well, what do you want us to tell them? We'll tell them that we got our man and that uh, they'll get the money shortly. All right, now, where's the money? Oh, it's, it's put away, Sheriff. Well, where? Where's that? It's hid. Where? Well, as soon as Ben here says he'll let me off for taking it, I'll show you where it is. He told me about being appointed judge. Makes it all nice and cozy, don't it, huh? <laughs> and I told you there'd be no deals, didn't I? You're going to tell us where that money is, and there's going to be no nonsense about it. Oh, no. That's where you're wrong, Sheriff. 
No deal, no money. You're gonna stick to that, huh? I sure am, Sheriff. Even if it kills me. Well, it might do just that. What are you gonna do, Roy? If he wants to play that game with that crowd out there feeling the way they do, I'm gonna have to swear me in some more deputies. Hoss, you and little Joe, raise your right hands, please. Hey, Ben, Bob was just telling us that we're gonna get our money back. Oh, you'll never know what it was gonna do to me, lose all that money. I didn't even know how I was gonna get through the winter. When are we gonna get it back, Ben? Well, just as soon as Sheriff Coffey is able to get sundown to tell him where he hid the money. Wait a minute. He, he said he'd tell if you let him go, didn't he? Well, uh, yes, he did. Well, then what's the sheriff got to do with it? Well, the sheriff is trying to get Santa to tell us where he hid the money without having to make a deal with him. Well, now, just how long is that going to take? Yeah. Well, sheriff Coffee has the answer to that. Well, I'm telling you. He better come up with the answer to that pretty soon. I'm worried about my family. I don't even know how they're going to eat. You better stay with him. Yeah, they're pretty worked up, ain't they? Where do you think you're going? Oh. Hold up a minute. Those, those folks back there are pretty riled up. Well, I don't blame them. Oh, we had money in that bank, too, didn't we? Yes. How much? All our working capital for the ranch. You mean we can't get along without it? That's right. What are we going to do? Well, right now I'm going into that courthouse and study the law. I'll expect me home for dinner. Oh. Little Joe and me will have dinner in town, too. We'll be around if you need us. Come on, sit down. Catching up on your homework, huh? Oh, gosh. I'm just beginning to find out how little I know about the law. <laughs> well, don't worry about it. Nobody expects you to be letter perfect. <laughs> well, maybe you don't, but how about, how about those poor people who are going to be in the courtroom? <laughs> well, what are you two boys doing out this late at night? Ben, I'd like to read you a list of names. List of names? Henry Perkins, John L. J. Wentworth, and, uh, well, it's a long list. Take a look at it yourself. You know them? Well, of course I know. They're all friends here. <laughs> well, I hope so. <laughs> Great Western Mining needs hoist cables. Loan's been approved, but of course now it can't be made. Great Western employs 94 men. All be out of work. That's just the beginning. The bank is sound, Ben, but it's closed and it's got to stay closed because I haven't any working capital and I don't know where to get it. Now, if Sundown doesn't tell us where to find that money he stole from the bank, all of those friends of yours are going to be pretty broke. Uh, that just about sums it up, Ben. And we talked to Sheriff Coffey. Now, he told us that Sundown won't cooperate unless you promise that he'll go free. That's why you've come to see me. It's a question of who's being punished, Sundown or the people of Virginia City. Now, some of the stolen money was yours. Don't you want to get it back? Well, I want to get it back, of course, but it's not that simple. I've been studying these law books. You know, Sundown admitted to stealing that money. He robbed the bank. Everybody knows it. Well, according to these law books, the sentence is mandatory for a four-time loser. He gets 20 years. Well, sounds like you've already made your decision. No, I haven't made my decision. I, 
I'm just trying to figure out what's right under the law. If Sundown goes to prison, this town goes broke. Charlie? Morning, Judge. Uh, I'm going in to talk to Sundown before the trial. You two bodyguards wait for me at the courthouse. Yeah, well, if it's all the same to you, Pa, we'll just wait for you right here. Well, I think I'll be all right. I don't need your protection. You're the judge. We're Roy's deputies, and that makes us officers of the court. Wherever you go, we go. It's our job. I sure wish you wouldn't take your job quite so seriously. Well, Paul, you always taught us that any job is worth doing is worth doing well, didn't it? He? he sure did. Howdy, Ben. All right. How are you, Ruth? Billy? Mr. Cartwright? How's your father? Were you able to persuade him to change his mind about telling us where the money is? He won't change his mind, Mr. Cartwright. Not even if you... Asked him to? I have. Uh, he won't do it. Uh, how long will he go to prison, Mr. Cartwright? If he's found guilty, 20 years. But he says you won't send him to prison. You can't. Not if you want the money back. Well, we'll just have to wait and see about that. Oh, he is uh, going to court this morning, isn't he? Yes. You won't send him to prison. I know you won't. Uh, you can't. Have to excuse my wife, Mr. Cartwright. She's pretty emotional this time, but with the baby coming and all, you, this whole business got her pretty upset. Yes, of course. Thanks, sir. <laughs> well, my dad always said that no matter what happened, you were one man that could always be trusted to do what's right. I figured I'd see you sooner or later, Ben. Them bankers and the like, I knew they'd get to you. I just dropped in to tell you that you'd be in court at 11 o'clock this morning. Or when I've appointed Clem Powell to act as your attorney. Attorney? What for? Well, I figured you're entitled to advice from counsel. <laughs> advice? I don't need any advice, Ben. I'm holding all the cards, ain't I? Not all of them. Well, if that's the way you're thinking, Ben, maybe it's you that needs your advice. Come on, sit down here. Let's talk it over, huh? Ah, <sighs> oh, yeah, I should have figured it. A man like you sitting up there on the bench, honest, God-fearing, and new to the job. I should have figured it all right. Setting me free kind of sticks in your craw, don't it? I suppose you looked up all those law books. Yeah. Well, I'm an old man, Ben. If you throw everything there is in those books at me, I ain't gonna get out of those walls alive. I'm gonna die there. Yeah, I'm aware of that. You want to see me die there? No. I got a grandchild coming, Ben. I, I want to see that child walk and, and, and talk and, and learn to ride a horse. <laughs> Why'd you rob the bank? Oh, I got sick of seeing my boy and his wife breaking their backs, daylight till dark, trying to make a crop off a of land so poor even the prairie dogs walked away from it. 
I get tired of seeing them kids living on nothing but rabbit stew and marsh. I just got tired of seeing Ruthie wearing clothes that other women threw away. I just got tired of having no money for medicine or anything else, man. I just got tired. You told me about it, I'd have helped out. Well, a man can get tired of begging favors, too, man. A man likes to get up off his knees once in a while. Yeah, I can understand that. But there's other ways of doing it besides robbing a bank. Is it? A man with my reputation? Oh, Ben, there ain't crimes bad enough if people won't believe I can do them. I don't know, Sundown. You never gave yourself a chance to find out otherwise. Oh, but I did, Ben. I did. Oh, boy, I did. But this town wouldn't give me a chance to save my soul. Well, now it's my turn. I'm telling you, Ben, if you want to get that money back, there's only one way to get it. Yeah, Sundown. Sundown. You answered every question I had in my mind. Except one. Why'd you give yourself up? Why? Well, I... I figured I'd split the money with my boy and... Head out with the rest of it. Now, why didn't you? He wouldn't take it. You know, I had to knock him stiff with a piece of firewood to keep him from bringing me in. Well, I got to thinking, Ben. What good was the money if my boy didn't want it? You see, I stole the money for them, Ben. <laughs> I'm an old man, Ben. My life's behind me. What good would all that money be to me, huh? Roy? I'll see you in court. Yeah, well, Ben. You just think over what I've been telling you. Make it easy on yourself. Make it easy on both of us, huh? Ben, you sure are getting a lot of advice, ain't you? Everybody's trying to help you make up your mind, even the defendant. Well, I've had a few suggestions made, yes. Well, I ain't gonna tell you what to do, because there's one thing that I have learned in my years in the public service. Do your duty and give advice to nobody unless they need it. Now, if I was you, I wouldn't listen to anybody. I'd do just like I felt like doing. You know, Roy, I've learned something, too. Yeah? I've learned that everybody starts out by saying that they're not gonna tell you what to do. And then they tell you what to do. Ben, we can't make deals with a thief. Why, if we do it for one, we have to do it for all. To bargain with a criminal is a first step toward moral suicide. Well, what does the defense attorney have to say? Oh, I, uh, I understand my colleague's view, but I disagree with it. What we do today needn't dictate what we do tomorrow, nor does it uh, commit us to any certain course of action. We can't always live by a hard and fast set of rules. There are times when we, we must make concessions. We must be flexible. Very well put. Well, thank you, gentlemen.
Here he comes now. Hey, got nothing to worry about, Sundown. We'll be over in a little while, we'll have our money back, and it'll soon be forgotten about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Court ready, Your Honor. That's all. Everybody rise. Circuit Court, Virginia City. Judge Ben Cartwright presiding, now in session. All sit. People versus Sundown Davis. Well, gentlemen. Prosecution's ready, Your Honor. Defense is ready, Your Honor. Will the defendant please rise? Now, Sundown, you know the charge against you. Yeah, yeah, I know why I'm here, Ben. You want to hear the charge read? No. Well, I guess all that remains for me is to, to ask you whether you plead guilty or not guilty. Uh, I'm guilty, man. I'm guilty. If the court please, before sentencing, the defense would like to make a few remarks to the court. Now proceed. Your Honor, there isn't a person in this courtroom who doesn't know that Sundown offered to return the money he stole from the bank. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> That's what I said. I said I'd do that. We think this is a fair offer. The court is not asked to set this man free just to give him a light sentence. It is a fair bargain, one which will not abort the law, but which will avoid something this community cannot afford, financial disaster. The defense throws this case on the mercy of the court. Mr. Powell, the law says quite clearly that the defendant should be given a severe sentence to make the kind of bargain which you suggest. It seems to me would weaken the law. In this case, to my way of thinking, rests on a serious question. Which is more important, the welfare of the people or the welfare of the law? The welfare of the people is a thing of now, of this moment. But the law is for all time. And the law stands for all people. It must not be weakened. It must be guarded. Guarded even with our lives. Let the record show that the defendant stands convicted. Guilty as charged. Sundown Davis, will you please rise? I sentence you to 20 years at hard labor. sentence. You've done your duty. But you ain't never going to see that money. Never. Never are you going to see it. Ready? Take me home. I'm frightened.
boys better stay here with your paws. Come on. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Well, hold it. What kind of a law is it? Allows a man like this, robbers of everything we ever made. Huh? How about that, boy? What kind of a law is it, boy? Huh? What kind of a law is it? Inside. That's far enough. What? There's no need for gunplay, Roy. You know who we are. Every one of us lost a lot of money in that bank, Roy. All we want to do is get our money back. Now, why don't you take yourself and your deputies and go for a little walk for a while? We'll go and have a few words with Sundown. By the time you get back, he'll tell you exactly where it's hit. Now, both these barrels is loaded with buckshot. And if we cut loose, there's going to be a mighty big crop of widows in this town tonight. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to get back out of range of this gun. One. Two. Roy, we're all citizens and taxpayers. Then act like it. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. All right. All right. But it ain't right. It ain't justice. Justice, Mr. Now, the law is one thing, but the decent thing is Hold up now. Hold your horses, gentlemen, please. Don't all of you rush at me at once now. What is this? Uh, ben, I guess as prosecuting attorney, I can speak for all of us. All right, Mr. Hicks. It's this way, Ben. When I argued for the law as it is written, it was my job. But to tell the honest truth, I thought Sundown was bluffing. I thought when the man was faced with the reality of 20 years in prison, he would relent, tell us where the money is. I see. And now that uh, you see that you're mistaken, what do you propose? That we make a deal with him. Roy, what do you think? Ben, I certainly know what my duty is. But I don't enjoy putting a shotgun on decent folks that I've known all my life. So I've got to say that I'm with them. This town is bankrupt, Ben. You've got to listen to reason. I'm trying to do that, gentlemen. But you are making it very difficult. What can we do to change your mind? Change the law. Ben, you can't leave here without granting permission for us to make a deal with sundown. got it all wrong, George. I'm telling you that no deal will be made with Sundown. You're selling us down the river. You know that, don't you? Come on. Oh, I've been thinking all the way out here. The law has been served, but has justice been done? Well, I think you did just what you had to do. Sure would have made things simpler, fool. Sundown and just taken that money and just kept on running. That's the only thing I can't figure out. Why didn't he just keep on running? Yeah, that's been in my mind, too. It's been in my mind a lot. Boys, I'll see you at the house. I'm gonna make a stop on the way home. Oh, no, we'll go along with you. Uh, you gonna follow me around for the rest of my life? I'd like to talk to you a bit, Billy. You and your wife. Won't you come inside? I'll... I'll make some coffee. Thank you, ma'am. You can sit down right here. I'll get some coffee on. It won't be a minute. Talk to you too, if I might. Talk to both of you. 
Um, well, Billy, uh, this morning when I, uh, I sentenced your father, I had to. The law is very specific. Twenty years. Uh, I don't know if you realize what... Uh, Ruth. I was saying, I don't know if you realize what that means to a, a man your father's age. Life imprisonment, that's what it means. Because I don't think your father will be able to live out his sentence. And that worries me. Worries me too, Mr. Cartwright. Does it? Sure it does. My pa. Well, Billy, uh... Ruth, would you, would you sit down so I can look at you when I'm talking to you? Billy, your father gave himself up to me. He told me that he'd stolen the money because he wanted to help you and, and Ruth and that you had refused the money, and that you had told him to, uh, to give himself up. Then he said that he, he'd had to hit you with a piece of firewood. I don't know anything. Billy! Ruthie, you shut up! Billy! Billy, he can see the bruise on your face. Tell him the truth. It's, it's the truth, Mr. Cartwright. Send down. He came home late with all that money, and he wanted us to take half. Billy wouldn't take it, and there was this big fight. Ruthie! Billy, I don't have to protect your father. I have to protect my husband, the father of my child. Is that the way it happened? No, that isn't the way it happened, Mr. Oh, Cartwright. Oh, Billy. Billy, Ruthie, please. you got to tell him. Please, not Honey. with the baby. I can't do it. I can't let him. Can't touch. you understand? Don't you see? Honey, how can I live with myself? Can how, can I, how can I live with my own son? <laughs> hey, Mr. Cartwright, the man you sentenced this morning was the wrong man. I stole that money. Billy Davis, you have entered the plea of guilty to the charge of bank robbery. Have you anything to say in your own behalf before sentence is passed? No, Your Honor. I hereby sentence you to the minimum term allowed by law. Ten years in the prison of the Territory of Nevada. Since this is your first offense, and since all the monies involved have been returned, the law leaves to the discretion of the judge the weight of mitigating circumstances. I therefore suspend the sentence. All but four months, which you will serve in the jail of Virginia City. <gasps> this court stands adjourned. Oh, Billy. <laughs> four months. <laughs> oh, Billy. Four months. Son, there's going to be another mouth to feed when you get out. <laughs> now, Ben here has offered me a job on the Ponderosa. Maybe he'll, uh, maybe he'll have a job for you when you get out. You think you can handle it? I'd sure like to try, Paul. Yeah. <laughs>
I'd like to have him try something. Well, daughter, we got a lot of things to get ready for that grandson of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mr. Cartwright. Come on, honey. Ben, 